we'll just jump right into it because right. uh, because I know you guys are busy and, and things like that. So, but what made you want to compete in Miss Universe? Because I know you're not you're not a newcomer. Um, <laughs> you're an old timer like me. But oh yeah, <laughs> been around a while. <laughs> been around a while. But what made you finally want to compete in Miss Universe GB? I think for me, um, depending on who is watching and who is present and who knows anything about my history. I understand people, this might be the first time people actually yeah. come across me as well. Um, you know, I've, I've been in this industry for um, at least five years and a lot has changed in the last five years and then particularly mm -hmm. in the last three years for me. My career yeah. has changed, my profession's changed and I know I've certainly changed as a person and mm -hmm. I think if anything, my certainly from the professional influence, um, you know, now I work in clinical trials, now I'm kind of a lot more in a position where I can make genuine change. And mm -hmm. I never thought I'd be in that position, certainly at my age. And I thought, actually, I, I can do bigger. I can give more. I have so much more to give now. I have so much more knowledge. I have so much more experience, both in the real world, um, yeah. but then also kind of from an ambassadorship point of view as well. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, you know, I think the kind of people that these competitions attract we want to be attracting these established women yeah. and I'd like to think I am established now <laughs> and universe certainly really does seem to want the established women almost you know very multifaceted women mm -hmm. not that other competitions don't but it really seems to be the brand that they push mm -hmm. and I was thinking I think a lot of the qualities that I have a lot of the experience I have and a lot of the aspirations I have um, really do match up with the Miss Universe Great Britain values and the Miss Universe values as well and Anybody, everybody wants the opportunity to represent their country, their mm -hmm. culture on an international stage, be it in athleticism, be it in sport, be it um, on the political side of things. Um, mm -hmm. And this is most often the, the only opportunity a normal person would get. I'm not an athlete and I don't have any plans to go into politics in the near future. And I don't, mm -hmm. you know, I, I do work internationally with clinical trials, but kind of that's as part of a company or part of you know um part of the profession so just being mm -hmm. able to represent as me that is a wonderful opportunity yeah. and of course a dream for anyone so I would really like the opportunity to do that again and I just I feel like I have so much to give I have so many amazing ideas and I know I could go out there and really make a big difference to a lot of people and, and especially in the circumstance of being as they are so that is my I don't know that's probably the shortest way I can answer that but probably <laughs> Yeah, I, just, I feel like I have a lot to give and I'm a completely different person now and I want to get that out there onto uh, an international platform. Yeah, so I know that, as you've mentioned, you've also competed in other um, uh, systems before mm -hmm. and I think for those who know you, know that you competed in Miss World mm -hmm. and you uh, represented England uh, at the international stage and you came top three. And that that is very amazing. And <laughs> <laughs> what was that experience like? It's um again, it's I think with the situation being as it is for everyone, we have uh, we've had a lot of time to kind of reflect over memories and things like that. And I have been revisiting that quite a lot. I've been revisiting that period of my life quite a lot. And I've realized there is still a lot of imposter syndrome going on. <laughs> I really I I went there with a goal to mm -hmm. hopefully get into the top 40. I would have been happy as Larry with that. That was the ultimate dream because again, there was 120 contestants there, yeah. all incredible, sensational women. And every day I tried to sit at a different table with different people because I just wanted to get to know everyone. They all had such amazing things to give and amazing stories to tell. Yeah. And so I, you know, once I'd gone around as many people as possible, I thought, you know, oof, top four you could be a bit of a push um so we'll, we'll have to see so as i did end up progressing through the competition I mean, you can watch back you can see every time it walked around just like everybody else is you know, oh wonderful great lovely you know they can see game face on i just <laughs> cannot believe what's happened to me. still can't believe what happened to me um immense pride um to be able to do that and to be able to have gone down in history like that but yeah a lot of imposter syndrome um still knocking about thinking, god I, I don't really feel like i deserve to be there but then i look back and think i gave it everything i had and again it, you know the skills and the qualities i had were very topical at the time and they suited the other continental candidates mm -hmm. as well when we went out to go and do the humanitarian projects that we did mm -hmm. so again we all matched each other really well and we were a team we were a team of women who went around and did all the you know the various uh, projects that we've worked on so for that particular year I think I matched very well to what they were looking for another year probably not so again that's something that 
that anybody who's involved in pageants should always consider that just like any kind of job interview or position or ambassadorship, it's about what's topical and what's current. And it's about representation as well. It's making sure that that candidate who has chosen to win or chosen to be the person who holds that title needs to be the most representative for what is currently needed at that time as well. You know, everything is very sensitive and we need to make sure that people feel as though they're being represented properly. That's mm -hmm. a big part of this job. And one of the things that I, um, Holly Peary, for those who don't know who she is, she's the uh, Pageant Girl UK director. Um, she always says, different judges, different winner, different day. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. I think that's so important because um, if it's a different judge on a different day, it could be a completely different winner. Sure. That doesn't take away from the girl who's won and it doesn't take away from the girls who've placed. Um, it's it's completely different for everyone on who they feel is suited for the job on that day. Um, oh, so I think that's one of the things that a lot of girls need to know and not to take too personally uh, in mm -hmm. their journeys in pageantry. Um, but one of the questions that I, I did want to ask you and is, do you think that being a former Miss England and a top three Miss World finalist gives you an advantage in Miss Universe? Not in the slightest. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the slightest. They are two completely different competitions. Mm -hmm. And from the research I've done, from what I've been looking at, there's no way that you can compare them. Yes, they are both ambassadorship mm -hmm. positions. Yes, they both are involved in a lot of humanitarian aid. But I think, you know, one is kind of, if you're going to compare the two of them, I think one is, say, quite media-based and quite um, interested in outreach and making kind of non-specific impact. And the other kind of focuses on specific projects, mm -hmm. picks a project, goes and does that. Whereas I think both, of course, are huge ambassadorship platforms. But yes. I think, you know, if you were to look at the qualities of and the personalities almost of the different candidates who represent each year, you can see a significant difference. And I don't think that there's a particular personality you have to have or anything like that. I just think the competition plays towards the strengths um, of, you know, again, women are so multifaceted. Yeah. So the wonderful thing is that women it can so easily um, kind of you know convert over as such um but as you know the Miss World competition is kind of very focused on all these different rounds and things yeah. like that you know that you have to be sporty talented charitable they kind of they, they seem to have these kind of very set parameters about what they would potentially want from a winner in the sense of what they should be able to do mm -hmm. but then you know you compare Miss Universe again it, they seem to shape it around who that candidate is yeah. so again depending on what you want from a competition it's whether or not you think I must be able to do I must be talented I must be sporty I must be this that and the other or I'm going to go and present myself to this competition mm -hmm. and then they're going to almost mold around me. So it's complete. Yeah. That, that's what I think is the big difference between the two of them. And it's almost maybe a little bit more vulnerable with the universe in the sense you're going and saying, yeah. this is who I am. This is who I am. Suitable for this position this year, this month, this mm -hmm. decade period, you know, whatever mm -hmm. kind of parameters that are set. So I think that's, you know, pardon the pun, the beauty of both of these competitions is yeah. that despite both being ambassadorship positions, they are so different. And they again, they, they really, they do encourage women to be multifaceted, both of them. Uh, and I just think one is more defined than the other. And that's mm -hmm. just wonderful because then it means that it's inclusive and everybody has an opportunity to go and present on an international stage. Yeah. And, and I think that's one of the beauties of the pageants is that they're all so different and they all okay. offer something unique and they all it's look for something unique in all the contestants um, yeah. that compete. Um, but with 2020 being the way that it has been, it's been a year, <laughs> to oh, say yeah. the least. <laughs> it's been a year. Um, what has the preparation been uh, been like for you? Because I know that the Miss Universe final is normally held in July, a mm -hmm. few days after my birthday every single year, meaning that I can never ever watch it because I'm always busy. But this year it, it was shifted. So what's the preparation been like for you? It's, ha it's really challenged me in a different way. Um, mm -hmm. 
Actually, with regards to my preparation, um, with regards to getting the message out there about a sisterhood and my chosen mm -hmm. cause with the Eva appeal, I've had to be so innovative and it really <laughs> stripped me back to my roots and made me think, again, what do I have to give that might mm -hmm. make people want to donate or learn about a sisterhood and the Eva appeal um, in a time that's very difficult and asking mm -hmm. for more from yeah. people is even more... Um, I, I don't know, e even more kind of challenging than it ever was before. Mm -hmm. And yet it really stripped me back and thought, well, what do I have to give on the absolute basis? I can't go out there and of course be giving talks and things like that because we can't be gathering. Yeah. Um, so it made me go back into kind of my STEM roots and learn a lot more about technology, learn about sound, learn about music, learn about um, distribution of streaming so that I could host online concerts. Mm -hmm. And then luckily- I saw them. Started. <laughs> you saw some of that? Yeah, uh, <laughs> during the first lockdown. <laughs> yeah, so what's uh, one of the things that I wanted to ask, what's been the difference between lockdown, the first lockdown and lockdown 2.0, uh, the <laughs> second one? So what's the difference been for you and if there has been any? There's been a big one for me. So first lockdown, I was working on my dissertation and just trying to get through my master's, literally clawing my way to the finish line. Sympathies uh, on that. Know, it, dissertation brain is hard enough as it is, mm -hmm. but with a pandemic and again, the added pressures of that and the fact that I was still mourning the loss of my lab project, which I really thought was going to be the making of me. Mm -hmm. um, all these dreams I'd had for three or four years shattered and mm -hmm. having to learn new skills and then pull it all together and somehow pass, which I did surprisingly. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was difficult in itself because I was sat at a desk 24 seven trying to scrape this dissertation together. Mm -hmm. And then lockdown 2.0, I was physically on the, on the front line as such, but not in the sense that kind of like frontline ward nurses are, mm -hmm. but I'm patient facing. I'm, processing COVID-19 samples because um, I'm working on a couple of seroprevalence studies and population studies, mm -hmm. putting everything that I've trained for over the past five years into practice, of course, but such a vast change to go from mm -hmm. in my home, um, typing up this, that and the other, and then physically being kind of thrown in the deep end, literally, because clinical trials at the moment are really trying to maintain yeah whatever um you know traction they had before well, um when everything is actually being focused on COVID-19 but other trials yes. still go on of course it's very controversial at the moment that we're finding a lot of cancer services yes. are hugely depleted which you know that's my professional background so to see that is very difficult to deal with mm -hmm. knowing that those industries that have been built for decades have gone yeah. um so again you know trying to maintain that momentum um <laughs> in clinical trials that you know that's been a really big change for me and of course it has been a challenge so i'm very lucky that i kind of i didn't go back into the position i was in with lockdown before but you know that wasn't an option for me i had to get out there i have, I have to be employed mm -hmm. and in my particular line of work i am probably going to be physically in a lab somewhere um mm -hmm. and everybody's having to pull together and put whatever skills they do have into the covid19 and the sars cov2 trial efforts so yeah. luckily i have been very proactive and i've um you know i haven't been locked inside um so i feel very lucky in that sense but yes a big change between the two of them but they are related which I'm, I'm, i am very i'm very lucky to be in the position I am and I do acknowledge that every day yeah so with everything that you've got going on um with your work and and your dissertations that you had at the time um what was your platform focus and how have you managed to keep yourself going with your platform and raising awareness for what you did I think my, my platform seems to be kind of generally medical, but um, I kind of got two platforms, of course. I'm very passionate about gynecological cancer research. Um, I've worked with um, lots of amazing female patients over the years and of mm -hmm. course they're very elusive cancers the gynecological cancer of course there's all this huge hype about making sure that you go for your pap smears for cervical cancer which mm -hmm. you know anybody's watching make sure you do um yeah. it's funny, you know we we hypothesize that we could probably pretty much eliminate cervical cancer with the right treatment with vaccination with regular um assessment so that is a yeah. huge part of the eva field um, you know, the, the ch charity that I've been raising money for. But then on the flip side, I'm also a very passionate advocate for women in STEM because mm -hmm. there's none of us. Yeah. <laughs> we're like unicorns. We don't exist. But yeah. very luckily in my master's, there were lots of amazing female scientists. So I've really been inspired that we do have a place. We have a place at the table mm -hmm. and we can do amazing things. And even though Sheffield is this tiny little research mm -hmm. centre, there's a couple of academics there that have... Mm -hmm change the parameters of modern medicine as we know it not that you'd know because they're like eh, it's just the day <laughs> job. 
but they're incredible. So luckily having those as my teachers and mentors has really installed a fight in me to get women into STEM. Um, but the biggest, of course, challenge with women in STEM is that most women don't know how to get into it. A, a lot of men don't know, but women even more so. It's not you know, particularly readily available in mainstream education. No. I, I thought I had to go to med school to be a scientist. Mm -hmm. And that was my name until I figured out that I could do it another way and do it a lot more specified. But yeah. I had to figure that out myself just from spending a bit of time on UCAS. Mm -hmm. You know, there should be there should be platforms, there should be websites, there should be documents, it should be distributed so that women understand if they want to go into science, technology, engineering, mathematics, they have the options available. And if anything, breaking the stigma that you do not need to be a straight A student to be in STEM, because I certainly am not. <laughs> I absolutely bulldozed my A levels. I mean, I tried very hard, but I, my brain just didn't work the way A levels wanted to. It's obviously worked very well for university, but again, I was given a chance by people who didn't want someone who was maybe only good on paper. And again, it's getting that story out to people, making people realize that you are not defined by a letter or a number now as it is on a piece of paper. I'm very passionate about that because I'm living proof, and a lot of my colleagues are, that you don't have to take the easy way to get to where you need to go in academia so yes as you can tell I can go on for them go on about them forever um, no but... it's it's good to be passionate about something and especially about this um because um for anyone who knows Naki uh, she's also one of the pageant girls she's uh, she also does uh, chemical as you paused um She's a graduate from chemical engineering and she's so passionate about that. And I became passionate about STEM because of her. So to yeah. hear other people being passionate about it is really great. And it's something that we need to advocate for, I believe. And uh, for anyone who's done a master's, I salute you because I just finished mine as well. And <laughs> it, those final months of your dissertation are pure it's something else. There's another level of hell. And security, you're going through modules like, oh, just pass another exam. Oh, lovely. And then again, the definition, you start, oh, I've got this lovely project. Very <laughs> nice. I'm not thinking on it because it's not the one I wanted, but I can get through this. It's fine. I've got a wonderful supervisor. I've never had that before. Fabulous. Oh, I'm set up to get through this. And then, yeah, those last three months, I, I, the place. It's good hell. Head, yeah. My goodness. The music I was listening to as well. Um, you know, I came a completely different personality for sure. I, I went <laughs> full on mad scientist. And, you know, I, I really have this thing about mad scientists in the media. You know, like you look at like, let's say, big blockbuster releases like Venom and all these crazy scientists doing these terrible things. So I used to be very passionate about that. But I, I went to a pretty strange place. When uh, I was uh, to, to be fair, I do sympathize and I know what that place feels like. Um, <laughs> yeah. But one of the other questions that I wanted to ask is, uh, as I've been asking all the contestants, if you if you've seen it on the other lives, is why should you win Miss Universe? It's why such a I? pageant question, uh, but it's something that I feel like we as a pageant community need to know um, more about you guys and to know why you want to win. I think with British women as well and British culture, we are so self-depreciative. Yes. Our humour is self-depreciative. You know, we take the mick out of ourselves all the time in order to. Yeah connect with each other and we tell each other bad things that have happened to us in order to connect so no it's very much a question that we need to get out there and in interviews in general like why should you get this job why do you deserve this position so yeah my answer to that is is as I've said before I do believe I have a lot of qualities that allow me to be hopefully quite prevalent in an ambassadorship kind of role. I'm very involved in the community. I'm very involved in the global um, medical research community as well. And if we're kind of looking at current topics and what I'm hoping is needed ambassadorship wise, um, I've experienced incredible feats of collaboration and unity on my day-to-day -day job. So I understand what needs to be done in order for that to happen. And I know I'm lucky in that sense. I know I'm very, very lucky to have experienced that and not a lot of people do get that position, but that experience is valuable and I would love to apply it to the platform of Miss Universe Great Britain. Again, I've said I have amazing ideas which I could do, everything that I'm already doing, but even bigger. And I know that the work that I'm able to do and the qualities and the skills that I have wouldn't just benefit the women of Great Britain, they would benefit the women of the world. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm hoping if I am successful, then um, that, you know, these ideas and these um, 
kind of goals and aspirations will be able to be taken forwards. But I just, I, I really kind of hope that um, it comes across that I'm a very hardworking member of the community who very much, um, I'm very kind of purpose driven. I know what my purpose is. I know that my purpose is to help people at baseline, but I know exactly how I would be able to do that as well through education, through accessibility, and through making sure that um, people feel represented as well on a number of platforms. Oh, that's amazing and it's nice to hear that you actually know why uh, you want to win uh, the crown and you seem to have a purpose as to what you would do with the crown uh, should you win yeah but one of the questions that um, I'm very passionate about and is how do we get other people involved in pageantry and to come together as a pageant community as a whole uh, to create something that um, other countries seem to replicate so easily and because like yeah. in other countries um, the society seems to get behind their pageant girls and they're almost like celebrities but in in the yeah. UK we don't tend to get much public support so how can we as a pageant community and pageant land uh, online get together with everyone and give support to whoever to whichever system is out there which we're trying to do in our own little corner but how can we do that as a pageant community yeah oh i have again this is something i've been really kind of thinking about because when you look into pageantry and you look into the kind of women that do it they are exceptional mm -hmm. and they're out there yes. and it it's about trans i was saying to my, my family the other day that um trans i think transparency is what is going to save british pageantry and really take it to that next level not just kind of transparency on the com competition front but again mm -hmm. we've got to combat this self-depreciative culture of britain which i know is years old yeah so it's, it's to not to going anywhere out yeah, we've got to get out there and show women what we do and how amazing it is and how amazing we are and how anybody is welcome and how when they work towards you know a title or towards a platform that that then becomes theirs and that you don't have to have the title to have mm -hmm. the success and to see the community outreach and to see the efforts and the fruits of your labor and i think again it's, it's about making sure that we, we've got to be far more celebratory of our achievements mm -hmm. and before i was thinking is it because the media hate us or is it because of this and i know it's not because i've spoken to some wonderful journalists and i've worked with some amazing television companies that say themselves why isn't this more well known my daughter would love this my cousin would love this my sister would love this yeah why isn't it getting out there and i think it's because we're all too humble and humility is again one of the probably the, the biggest qualities that a you know a pageant title holder needs of course yeah. she does she needs to you know know where she needs to improve know what she needs to do next but also we do need to be congratulatory we do need yeah. to celebrate our achievements otherwise no one's going to hear them you need and, to blow your own horn sometimes yes, uh, because other telling. people yes. won't do it for you hundred percent mm -hmm. and it's about sharing your stories and telling as many people as possible because again on a daily basis i meet them god you'd be a good myth so and so or miss so and so, miss so and, so. Oh. and i do sometimes i was talking about like you need to look into this i'm not being crazy or anything but i did this thing i got to go all over the world i got to work with amazing companies i've got jobs and you know incredible um professional activity through them mm -hmm. You need to get involved. And people just sit there like, you're joking, this came from a pageant. I'm like, I am, I am not joking. I still have job offers to this day in Mauritius, in China, in India. And so if I know if I want to go somewhere, I can go that drop the hat. And that wasn't from particularly Miss World experience. That was from the people I met at functions in the yeah. UK. So it isn't something that is only kind of exclusive to say, you know, the big five, if we must use that term, but I don't really like using that term. It's, it is very much what you put in, you get out with pageantry. And I don't know any industry that's like that, you know, again, with sports, singing, you mm. name it. Yeah. Most of the time, what you put in, you do not get out if you're lucky. Whereas pageantry, it seems to be so equal. If you work hard enough, you might not win the title, but you might get incredible opportunities. Opportunities. Mm -hmm. God, the, the opportunities I, I had as a regional title holder, some of them were absolutely, you know, some of them could even be considered bigger than, you know, what I did as a national title holder. And I think that's such a, you know, a wonderful thing to advertise, you know, a national, whatever, you know, kind of region you decide to work within, you can do so much within mm -hmm. that. And to, it, I, again, I think it's the only industry in the world where you can have immediate impact. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, so again, you have to work for years for some place to even see any kind of positive reaction or anything. You can get out there, you can talk to someone, build their confidence, inspire them, you can advise them. And it's immediate, mm -hmm. straight away. You can yeah. walk away from the event knowing that you've left it better than you found it. So yeah, I just, we need to be more celebratory. We need to be more transparent. We need to be, you know, we need to advertise ourselves as well and, and also we not did. be afraid of backlash not be afraid that the media might say something cheeky mm -hmm. the uk media is questionable at best you know it's mm -hmm. a big big industry and they do thrive off kind of selling scandalous stories we can't that can't be something that bothers us we just we've got to carry on and do it anyway there's i think there's a quote by dolly parton isn't there where find out who you are and then do, and it. do it on purpose it yeah to, it has to be like, do it on purpose that's it that's exactly how we need to approach this be quite pushy, I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. And I feel like uh, we've got a lot of information here on this interview just to get to know you a little bit better <laughs> and to get to know what you're passionate about and to Obviously. get to know what what you, why you think you need to win, uh, why you think you should win the ne the crown. And we as a pageant land community want to help all of you girls as much as possible and get to know you and get to know your skill set to introduce you guys to a mm -hmm. whole new a new audience um and i just thank you for taking your time to uh, to talk to me and to take time out of your day because i know you're extremely busy um but it's thank you so pleasure. much thank you. And thank you for asking me questions where i can really kind of get my teeth stuck into them as well yeah it's and it's one of those where i questions. wish this I, I, at the same time, I wish this lives could be longer, but I, I, <laughs> it's literally like now I've got back to back and don't I'm talking to you. Don't do that option. Don't do it. Don't do that to yourself. Half an hour is no. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, um, I've got Kev Wise next for all of you guys who are on the live, uh, if you could join us after this. But thank you so much. And I just want to wish you good luck uh, in the thank next you. four days. Only four days until we have a, a Miss Universe uh, GB winner. So good luck in all your preparation and as well in work, because I know you're also working uh, alongside everything that you have to prepare for. So thank you for taking your time to talk to me. Thank you so much for having me. And again, what I said at the beginning, thank you so much for doing this. It's mm -hmm. so nice and it's so inclusive. And I think it's such a wonderful thing to do in the lead up to competition. We are all very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. If some of my ideas do help people. Some of them. <laughs> this is great preparation for people who maybe have never done an interview before as well. So again, you're, you're helping so many people doing this. You're providing entertainment. You're helping with our prep. And again, you're giving us this, this, this platform to get out there. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much, Steph. I'll talk to you soon. And I think we're going to be also doing a true, uh, true facts um questionnaire on our insta stories on thursday so you guys get involved and make sure that you follow pageant land online because uh, we do post pageant related things and we're trying to build a community and we're trying to just get everyone involved so thank you so much steph thank you thank you so much for having me Take bye care. guys